A story that generated tons of interest yesterday and thousands and thousands of views on our social media platforms was the story of the uh, Christchurch Polytechnic, or Ara Canterbury as it's now been renamed for some unknown reason. Ara Canterbury's decision to offer, I think, a level three or a grade three mechanics course and they're going to translate all the course materials into te reo Māori because one student thought it would be a good idea and has dreams of opening a sort of Māori language mechanic shop. Um, there was then some debate over whether or not there was a Māori word for carburetor and very other things, an internal combustion engine in a car. And I got the impression from the story that they're going to use the English words. So the question is why? What is all this about? And look, I'm just going to be brutally honest. I think it's nuts. And so do most people who commented, uh, the thousands of people who commented on social media yesterday. But am I missing something here? Is there something intrinsically good, wonderful about this? Is it's going to have social benefits? Well, we are joined now by Temarino Lenehan, who is the ARA's Director of Tetriti Partnerships which has something to do with this, apparently. So, Tamarino, kia ora, welcome to the program. Nice to have you with us. Kia ora, Sean. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. All right. So, what is the intrinsic benefit of having a mechanics course in Te Reo Māori? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think talking about the reason why is, is a good place to start, Sean. Um, look, it's not just uh, because the learner wanted to. Uh, the learner in question has come through the Māori language medium schooling system in this country. So all of uh, learner's schooling has been in te reo, and uh, he's graduated out of the compulsory sector. He's into the, the tertiary sector now, and he was worried about his ability to be successful in uh, a, a English medium education and asked if it would be possible to, um, to to learn about the thing that he wanted to learn in te reo and to be assessed in te reo too. That's his first language. Okay, and, what's his uh, English like? Look, I, I, I don't know the student in question. I, I do know, Sean, that my own children are first language Māori speakers uh, and when they went into mainstream education, uh, they did struggle because it wasn't their first language. So there is a, a real challenge for our country uh, to support all of our people to be successful in education, uh, whether they are first language speakers of English or first language speakers of Māori. Uh, both of these languages are our languages, uh, our languages of this country. Well, so I don't, the well challenge is, both of them are... Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure English is an official language of, of this country, but you must recognise that Māori is not widely spoken and particularly not widely spoken outside New Zealand, and in commerce and in business and indeed in mechanics, simply has no you're presence right. as a language. Spoken. Mm? You, you, you're you correct, Sean, it's not widely spoken like English is, but there is an increasing number of Māori and non-Māori who are speaking te reo. There are, well, there give, me, give me the numbers, give me the numbers, Tim Marino. How many people are fluent in Māori in New Zealand? Look, we, we can probably get that data off, off, uh, off the internet, Sean, but last year there were 23,000 children enrolled in Māori medium language education in New Zealand. Yeah, which still doesn't explain kids. why we're having a Māori mechanics course, Māori language mechanics course at Canterbury Polytechnic. Yeah, let, 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 let me explain uh, the, the reason why. The, the, the reason why is uh, the kids succeed better. Uh, Children coming through Māori medium education, Māori children coming through Māori medium education are more successful than Māori children coming through mm. non-Māori medium education. Yeah. There, there, a report was released last year by the government. Uh, the name of the report is Te Kura Huranui, uh, the Treasures of Successful Pathways. It shows how successful Māori medium education is for Māori children. That, that, that's the reality of it. Um, Another reality is when they come out of the compulsory sector, they have very limited options to continue their education in te reo. Um, Ara has seen uh, the future. There are more and more kids coming through Māori medium education, 
and we want to be able uh, to respond to them so that they can continue to be successful in education. Okay. Now, that's brilliant. Is there any that's, demand? That's, is there any demand for mechanics, vehicle mechanics, who convert solely in Toreo? Or no, Toreo. Is there an international demand for this? Has any employer expressed a demand for this? No, but I, I, I think what we know about this sooner is they are passionate about automotive I don't uh, care if they're passionate. They, I care about will. what happens with my tax dollar and whether or not an educational institute and, Sean, a, a, and that dollar... You, Sean, no, 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 but what I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is you're not working for a cultural institution... You're working for an educational institution. Yeah, this is a national institution that's here for all people of New Zealand, including Māori. And here's a learner who wants to begin uh, a business in automotive engineering, and he wants to, to run that business in his first language. Has anyone done any business analysis as to whether there is a market for his business? Sorry, you'll have to repeat that. Sean. Has anyone done has anyone done any market analysis as to whether or not there is any market for the business of a Maori mechanic? I haven't, but look, what we do know, Sean, then is then if there you are, haven't done the research, any, why indulge this pipe dream? Look, what we do know, Sean, is there are more and more people learning te reo and speaking te reo as a first language. So there's a market. Without a doubt, there's a growing market. Well, no, of you can't language show people. me the research that says there is a market. That's your wishful Pollyanna's thinking. No, it's not. Look, like, of, of, there are 23,000 kids in our country studying in Māori media, medium education. The number of Māori speakers is growing. You know, our future includes the Māori. So this guy, he's looking at a business that he's passionate about and running that business in his uh, mother tongue. That's brilliant. Why, why don't we support that? Because we why don't we know. Because we don't know if anyone will want to use his business, or whether or not it'll fall I mean, it, flat on its face. There is no demand that we can see in the market for uh, multi language mechanics. Nothing is stopping this guy from continuing to use Tereo in his everyday life at all. How much is it costing? I mean, how much is it costing to convert the coarse texts and materials to Tereo? How much does assessing him in Toreo cost me as a taxpayer or cost ARA? Yeah, look, it's important to think about the costs and also the return on investment. So the costs to translate the programme and assess this learner are minimal, Sean. We well, have well, what's our own, minimal? Uh, Define minimal services. for me. We have our own in-house translators. That How much they do they cost? Anyway. They get paid a salary, Sean, just like I, okay. you do. Just like so there do. is no extra cost to doing this? At the moment, the costs are internalised. They are, you know, the costs of translation are an internal service. We're not going externally to pay other people to do this. We can do it ourselves. Great. So we, the costs are minimal. What I think is important is to think about the return on investment when we um, Tell me what the return on investment is then. Quantify that for me. Successful... Uh, learners, learners who succeed in the education, go on, grow businesses in our country and contribute to our economy. Okay, but That's you cannot give me a dollar figure or a rate of return on this investment. No, this is the first time it's, ha it's happened, Sean, as, as the media release said. This is the first time. What we do know, as I said before, is there is a market. Uh, good Where? How, show me the market. The How market big's the market then? You tell me there's a market. How big is it? Define it for well, me. Who's done the research on whether or not there's a market? Look, I've already covered this. There are a growing number no, of No, you've already failed to answer the question. Because it would appear to me you've done no market research. That's just something you're saying. Right? You have no facts Look, to back up your claim. I've given you a fact, John. You, you yeah, which listening. has got nothing to do with the potential, the market potential of a completely pie-in-the-sky business idea. The, the market is people who speak to them. That's the market, right? Yeah, 0.005% of, the, of the 5 million population of New Zealand. 
it's, it's, it's a gap in the market, Sean. It's a great business what idea. What market? Have you identified that there is any demand for people to have Māori mechanics? No, you haven't. Yes, the number of Māori speakers in this country. No, that's, Māori that's speakers may not want a Māori mechanic. They might someone, want someone who's a good mechanic. I, I'm a Māori speaker, and I, I, would, I would love to have a mechanic who's Yeah, the Māori problem English. is you haven't done any research, have it? Because it's all ideological claptrap, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know if you know much about business, Sean, but people look for gaps in the market and fill them because they know yeah. that there will yeah, be I see so many people running more. around saying, if only my mechanic spoke to Rao. Look, it just needs a small group of people, Sean. You know, one mm. mechanic's not going to service the whole country, does it? Okay. How many um, internalised people have you got working on this project then? Seeing you've got no idea about how much it actually costs or its cost benefits. I mean, how much are you pulling a year? How much are you pulling a year as the Tariti partnership person at the Polytech? But as I said, Sean, the cost for translating the materials uh, into it's a service we already provide. Uh, there, okay. there are no external costs here. And, and the return on investment is massive. Look, um, this auto uh, engineering course being translated is the first. Um, yeah, there's a reason for that. Of all the Polytechs in the country. Yeah. Um, it will become available for all uh, students who study auto engineering in the country. Fantastic. I thank you for your time. Yeah, the, 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 the potential is, is amazing. and No, it's look, not. There is no potential. You failed to qualify any potential. It is just a load of claptrap, if I'm going to be brutally honest with you. But it, gets, it keeps you in work, doesn't it? See ya. Um... Sorry. <laughs> oh, there's a market niche. No, there's not. You haven't identified one. You can't tell me how much it costs. You can't tell me what the market is. Honestly, how much long do we have to put up? And that guy's got a full-time job managing the treaty partnerships for ARA Canterbury, which used to be the Canterbury Polytechnic.